Yes, good evening, Eric Kleiner, K-L-E-I-N-E-R. Uh, good evening, uh, freeholders. Uh, I'm an attorney in the state of New Jersey. I have some of the speakers after me and some members of the community that support us, as well as members of the law enforcement community, the rank and file. Come forward with a resolution requesting the Jersey Attorney General supersede the Bergen, Bergen County Prosecutor for the purpose of prosecuting all of the criminal business of the state of Bergen County, uh, citing the Jersey Statute Annotated 52 colon, New Jersey Statute Annotated 52 colon 17B-106. I'm here speaking on behalf of several police officers that have been acquitted, tried, and had their lives ruined. These were not just men that were acquitted because they proved the reasonable doubt. These were innocent men. Kenny Ziza is one. Thomas Aletta, I'm representing now. Danilo Garcia, these were acquitted men who were fully innocent and were the victims of destruction of property, evidence, and out-and-out -out perjury under the uh, control of John Molinelli. Anthony Castronova, I was down in the trenches with him. We had to go through two trials. Taxpayers spent a fortune in these trials for an innocent police officer, a person who was a 9-11 responder, an NYPD officer, his family was ruined, he has young children, it's a travesty of justice. Jeff Roberts, the county police officer, was acquitted. Things were said about him that were completely untrue. Exculpatory <coughs> evidence was withheld. Now I'm representing Mark Messing from Palisades Park, Sergeant Messing, another person I'm watching his family be destroyed. Completely innocent man. This is not a Republican issue. It is not a Democratic issue. There are times in life where you're going to be called upon to do some very strange things and some very great things and some very brave things. This is one of those times. As John Dean said to President Nixon, there is a cancer growing on the White House. We've got a cancer here in what Judge Sybil Moses, God rest her soul, said this is God's country here in Bergen County. We can do better than this. So on behalf of these constituents, especially the men in blue, <coughs> we ask the freeholders to take this enormous responsibility before it gets worse. It's metastasizing. This cancer is now metastasized to open pending cases again and again. So we ask you to step in, help the taxpayers, help the police officers, help their children and our children's children, and please have the Attorney General, as best as possible, take over the prosecutions in this county for the betterment of our society. Thank you. Daniel Grange, C R E A N D. That's C R E A N G E. Hi, folks. Thanks for having me today. Good this is great. Yeah. It's uh, good to see dialogue, and it's it's really important what this gentleman just talked about. As a matter of fact, you probably don't even know me. He was talking about evidence that was withheld when two police officers were on trial. I had direct information of that information. I'm a retired police officer. And I ended up calling the defense when I read an article in the paper that was saying that the officers did something with the evidence when I knew they didn't. I called the defense and I said, didn't they share this with you? I reported this directly to my boss. How could you not have this information on hand? So, he stole my thunder with a couple different things I wanted to say, but uh, there is a cancer, and it's up to you guys to really look into it. This is your house. Take care of your house. Uh, my buddy Bill is going to show a video, a video of a woman that was sexually assaulted by Dr. Raji. I'm sure you're all, all, uh, all pretty familiar with how she or how Dr. Raji got off, okay? This man, in my professional opinion, should be doing 20 to 25 years for a, just terrible, terrible crimes, okay? And somehow it was swept under the rug. Now, Mr. Molinelli should welcome an investigation to clear his name. He should welcome it with open arms because if he's an innocent man, he would like to clear his name. I would hope that's what he would want to do. If he's an honorable man, that's what he'll want to do. And I implore you, I implore you, get an investigation from the AG's office or whoever you have to go to. Don't say, don't spin it off on the governor. I know a lot of you are probably saying, 
this is a governor issue. He's the one who appoints. Well, that might be the case, but you're the ones who take care of your house. Bergen County is your house. You need to look into this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bill Lennon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. B-R-E-N-N-A-N. There's quite a bit, bit, bit been said about John Molinelli tonight, and it's quite a bit more that won't be able to be said because you're only giving people three minutes at a time. And that says quite a bit, that there are more ethical lapses, criminal allegations, civil lawsuits, allegations and, and, and confirmed facts about the county prosecutor that call his integrity into question than can be said by a series of speakers in the time that you allow. And that's intolerable. I personally have uncovered crimes committed by Mr. Malinelli. The man falsely swore under oath to certain things that were untrue. He made false statements in connection with the public bid. He got you to authorize the payment of $10,000 to an individual from, from Las Vegas, Nevada, so that he would authenticate counterfeit sports memorabilia, which he then sold at a county auction to unsuspecting bidders when he knew that, the, that he had been put on notice that that material was counterfeit. He was put on notice it was counterfeit. He didn't provide notice that it was counterfeit or that he had received that notice to the individuals who were purchasing it. You had to authorize reimbursements for all that because he was engaged in malfeasance, misfeasance, and nonfeasance. Right there alone, the fact that this man put counterfeit in the stream of commerce using the imprimatur of the, the county prosecutor's office as, as a way to, to, to validate counterfeit should be enough. But there's more. There's, a, there's an employee who you're defending suits, Barbara Harrington, who was taken away by an armed police officer in an attempt to have her committed with no reason other than this was the friend of Malinelli. There's no basis for bringing her to, to a, a psychiatric institution and saying she needs to be incarcerated. And that happened. There's no de denying that. This is a, a dangerous abuse of authority. You have this man engaged, the, the power to wiretap and listen in on people's phone calls under the Constitution is something that should be carefully guarded. You have at least two cases where Judge Marilyn Clark has thrown out thousands of hours of wiretaps because the man broke the law. The man listened in on attorney-client privilege in a murder case, could have resulted in a murderer going free. The man listened in to a confidential informant and his handler and didn't tell Judge Clark, and that informant ended up with a bullet in the back of his head. And Bergen County is defending a wrongful death suit on behalf of John Molinelli because he's a defendant in that case. There's a case involving Thomas Rica from the village of Ridgewood. I don't know how you would feel if somebody stole $860,000 from the county of Bergen over the course of years and he never spent a day in jail. But because John Molinelli is the Bergen County prosecutor, that man was never charged with official misconduct, that man never served a day in jail, and he's only paying back $250,000. Crime may not pay in some places, but when Molinelli's on the job, crime pays for people who are connected. And there's a connection there. Can I have another minute? It's an important topic. It's discretion of the chair, Mr. Brown. Thank you. There's an issue here involving, involving the, uh, the same attorney. Now, Mr. Galantucci represented Mr. Raji, and Mr. Galantucci represented Thomas Rico. The missing amount of money is $500,000 from Ridgewood, and $500,000 passed from, from, from Bob Galantucci to Joe Ferriero so that Ferriero could influence John Molinelli into giving him a second PTI. PTI is unprecedented in sex cases. It's clearly unprecedented in double sex cases. Listen. You have an enormous responsibility here, and you have the authority. I don't know if you knew that. You have the authority and now the duty that this has been brought before you to ask that the Attorney General supersede John Molinelli. It's a dangerous, dangerous point in society when you have all of these things going on unchecked. You're the last line of defense for your constituents, and I hope you'll act swiftly and, 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 and with integrity this evening. Thank you. Will Roseman.
Hi, Joan. We met at, in Teterboro, if you remember. Uh, my name is Will Roseman. I'm the mayor of, of the borough of Colstead. And um, I'm currently finishing my 36th year as an elected official. I was elected at 18, serving as councilman for 16 years and 20 years as mayor. I find it unbelievable that I'm here today because it's something that I never would have suspected. But before I begin my statement, and I'll, I'll try to be as quickly as I, quick as I can, I want to ask this one question. What other prosecutor in the entire state of New Jersey has been in the press as often as John Molinelli has been, questioning the things that he's done, decisions by, this US, uh, by the uh, New Jersey S uh, Supreme Court and the appellate court as well? Uh, for those unfamiliar with me, you know that I have my own tale to tell. I was charged eight years ago when my ex-wife was using my insurance. The prosecutor's office never spoke to me, never interviewed me, never interviewed the clerk, never spoke to the employees responsible for insurance to see whether or not I was guilty or not. As it turns out, thank God, the New Jersey Supreme Court had decided that John Molinelli, and I'm quoting them, had committed or the circumstances show clearly and convincingly that there's been a patent and gross abuse of discretion by the prosecutor which constituted a clear error in judgment. Now that was one stroke later and over $500,000. But you know, I'm not here for me today. I'm here in regards to Dr. Raji and the incident pertaining thereof. For those that are unfamiliar, Dr. Raji is a dermatologist who was granted admission into the pretrial intervention program not once, but twice, allowing him to avoid prosecution for allegedly mo uh, sexually molesting numerous female patients. The U.S. Attorney's Office alleged that Joe Ferriero, former Bergen County Democratic Chairman, received $500,000 into a real estate holding or investment firm owned by him to help Raji's case. Now, this is a U.S. Attorney General. The government asserted that Ferriero was paid for his influence within, crim within the criminal justice system of Bergen County. When the judge presiding over Ferriero's trial, corruption trial, was asked, uh, the, asked the assistant U.S. Attorney how Ferriero could have had an impact on Raji getting PTI, she responded that there is a connection between Joe Ferriero and John Molinelli. In the first case, where a victim was eager to testify, Raji was admitted into PTI over the object, ob objection of the assistant prosecutor who handled the case, stating that it went against everything she stood for as a prosecutor. She stated that she was overruled by Molinelli, who took the decision out of her hands. Three minutes, Mayor. That's three minutes? Yes, sir. Oh, can I have another Madam minute? Madam Chair, if, if I may, thank you for, for allowing him some more time. One minute. Thanks I'll talk really much. quick. Molinelli told her that he would meet with the victim and later that she was on board. The victim said she does not recall ever hearing that or even commenting in that regard. She had reported the incident to the police on the day that she was sexually assaulted. That day, detectives made a recording of that conversation, which then went missing. Three years after his first PTI, Raji was admitted into PTI a second time for additional <coughs> sex offenses against female patients with the consent of Bergen County Prosecutor's Office over the objections of the PTI program director, the New Jersey Attorney General's Office. So it was remarkable that Raji's own lawyer testified that he had never known of someone receiving PTI twice. One of the victims feels so strongly about this horrific offense that she has submitted a video which I would like to play for you. In this short video, regardless of its length, its impact is devastating in its alleged corruption. This woman has been victimized first by her doctor and then unbelievably by the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. And she is asking for justice once again and asking that the Board of Freeholders at least watch her video, which is three or four minutes. I understand, if I may, that it, uh, your time has expired, but that you are going to try and make this video available for viewing offline. Well, what I'd like to do is, I would like the freeholders to consider this woman's video as a separate individual. Because it is a crime of sexual nature, it's very difficult for her to present and to come to this meeting. 
So I think it would be only fair and reasonable if you would listen to her vid video, which is very painful for her to do. And uh, you can, I mean, we will view this if you send it to each of us. But at this send point, you. Madam send Chair, it to you. Madam send Chair, it to me. if I may, yes. and, and it, as, as Chairwoman, you have that discretion, right. but as this freeholder, I would like to see this video. I would like to have it put on the record, and I would like the members of this audience to hear it as well. So, uh, you know, I would respectfully ask that um, this woman be allowed to have this video uh, played. Uh, certainly it's not this, not the mayor. So if you can give her three minutes, she's not here, but she's here virtually. So mm -hmm. that's my request, Madam Chair. No, I'm, I'm going to recommend that the video not be played uh, outside of the presence of the individual whose video it pur is purports to be. Uh, well, she I, actually I, I says. Actually, you know, it's, it's unprecedented in, uh, in the proceedings in, in this forum. And uh, before I were to uh, uh, reach a conclusion and make a recommendation to the board about whether that should be played, I would need to, I, I would need to do some research, Mayor. So you're asking that this woman who was sexually abused needs no, to Mayor, come in person before this august board. I'm not saying that. Present. Mayor. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm recommending to the chairwoman that the video not be played now and that I will undertake the steps necessary to determine whether it's appropriate uh, for for the presentation before this before this body in this forum. Well, I would so like it's to ask not going to happen tonight. Well, I would like to ask for a vote from the board of freeholders on whether or not they're requiring this woman to come here personally. That, we're not asking her to come no. personally. We're not um, asking um, her to come personally. It, it, Madam Chair, if I just may, and then I'll let this be. Uh, this is unprecedented with uh, the remarks made by the public regarding uh, Prosecutor Molinelli. So as it being unprecedented, so too this is unprecedented having a video. So once again, I, would, I will only ask once uh, that uh, this uh, video be allowed because if she was here, She'd be allowed to speak and have three minutes. I have to defer to counsel. Thank you. Um, That's my recommendation. If, I, if I may, Chairwoman, uh, Mr. Pastorio, um, the fundamental right of everybody is when something is said about them to be able to cross examine them if they want to or to ask questions. And it seems to me that that would be denied if the um, video was shown to the public. I think that you should undertake an in-camera review of the video, and if you think it appropriate, that the freeholders see it in camera as well, and then make a subsequent determination as to whether it should be released to the public. I'd like to add that she requested that this video be showed here this evening, and if, if, if it's the freeholders' decision that they not view it, because she has a statement to make as well. And if my three minutes are up, then I'd be happy to ask another individual to present the video. Uh, we spoke to her on the phone, and she said it was okay if the, we, e she emailed it to us. Um, I don't know if My aide, you know, Chris, because you spoke directly to her. <laughs> what time did you speak to her? Chairwoman, uh, Chairwoman this, this excuse me, if I may. So uh, my recommendation is that I be permitted to do the appropriate research necessary to determine whether it's appropriate for this kind of presentation in this forum. Uh, and, and my recommendation is that that not happen tonight. It's just not. Uh, it's, it's not Thank you very much. That we should make a snap decision upon. I, and, and, and for the record, I object to the fact that it can't be viewed. Thank you. We don't have the technology for it to be viewed. <laughs> well, <laughs> if I could, Madam Chair. Yes. yes. I think it, what Mayor Rosman wanted to do was to hold up an iPad and have the woman speak to us in a prepared video for us as freeholders to hear her message and to help to shield herself or, or to prevent herself from having to come out in public because the matter is so delicate. I don't think it's necessarily unprecedented in that we phone in for meetings. We Skype, we, we do our votes remotely when necessary. And given the fact that technology like this is so readily available to us, 
why shouldn't we use it here this evening? With all due respect, Madam Chair, there's no affidavit from this individual indicating that this is her consent for this to be viewed. There's no indication that she wants this to be viewed publicly other than representations. If there's such an affidavit of that sort, that's a different issue. I think that it's... I, I believe in I understand she says she, this on her video. Sure. There's nothing in writing. Let's I, have I, a little order. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I think it's appropriate for Council to review this. And and us to all view this as well it can be ultimately made part of the record and if and if so nece necessitated viewed in a f at a future date but, but, but at this juncture I think that it let us let council do the job that he's indicating is necessary help you with your decision just as a point of information help you with your decision you really out of order. Okay, but again, there's, there's a discussion going on, and, and you've had legal counsel give you an opinion. But you're not part of it, Mr. Brennan. Your legal counsel to make an informed decision about what you're it's about to do. Because as Mr. Roseman said, she was victimized by Dr. Raji. She was victimized by the county prosecutor, and I don't want her to be victimized by you. Okay. However, I, I have to it's stop. So but before, just as a point of information or a point of order, right now, as a point of information. The gentleman is out of order. I have to stop you. It's a prior restraint on speech. Thank you Madam, very much. Madam Chair, if yes. I may, I just want to, um, for the record, let um, um, everyone know on the board that I received an email from, from Jarrett regarding this woman who uh, sent the, uh, through a link, her video, and she states that she is order. giving approval for it to be Free presented. This is out of order during Mr. Subject. Gina's. Oh, uh, that's correct. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought she was done. I apologize. Oh, but yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank just, you so much. So, um, just just for the, for the sake of it, is that each of us have been sent this link uh, regarding this video, and again, uh, uh, each of us will get the view that I guess at our at our leisure. Thank you. And last but not least, Mike McCracken. <coughs> Last name is McCracken, M-C-C-R-A-C-K-E-N. Uh, this might be beating a dead horse a little bit, but I was hoping maybe at this point, in lieu of me speaking for three minutes, we could actually watch the video for three minutes. I'm really kind of interested at this point. Uh, just appreciate if the freeholders would give me that opportunity to play three minutes of a video. If you chose that video, I would. It's out of order. Video the the microphone down the board. You cannot put the video near the microphone. Yes, um, advice of counsel, I have to prohibit this. Okay. Okay. Uh, I appreciate your time either way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. The public hearing is closed. Is that a is that a is that a Mr. Brennan, I'm going to have to have you removed if you don't stop. And I mean it. We have given you opportunity, and now you are out of order. And if I have to get the police officers to remove you, I shall. We are now closed in the public hearing. Will the clerk read the resolutions on the consent agenda? 